Hey there, people! So today I am bringing you my Terraria Empress of Light guide for Master Mode and all other difficulties. This will work for Normal and Expert as well. I'll be including the fight itself, drops and loot, the summon item and how to summon the boss, arena, gear, strategies, and more. I'll give you some advice on how to fight her in the day, including some cheese, no hit, easy strategies in general. Uh, I'll be covering all classes, melee, ranged, mage, and summoner. I'm going to be doing the fight myself as a magic user, a mage. Um, I will not be doing it during the day because I'm just not that good, but uh, let's get on with it. About the boss, first of all, the Empress of Light is a new Halo themed boss added in the 1.4 update. She is an optional boss, so you're not required to fight her, but she does drop some nice loot if you do defeat her. If you can manage to defeat her while doing all of the damage to her during the day only, which essentially requires taking no damage because she will be enraged during the day with instant killing attacks, uh, but she will then, if you can do that, drop one of the most powerful weapons in the game, the Terra Prisma Summon. Uh, and she drops lots of other loot as well, so if you defeat her when it's not during the day, that's okay. You'll get some nice stuff. I'll show you that. So let's go on to how to spawn her. Uh, the Empress is summoned by killing a Prismatic Lacewing, which are found only in the surface hollow biome and only between dusk, which is 7.30 p.m. in game time, and midnight in game time after defeating Plantera. So you can only spawn her after defeating Plantera normally, although you can get one of these, you can capture them, take them into another world and do it that way. But uh, in order to fight her during the day, you will need to capture one of these prismatic lace wings with a bug net and then release and kill it after dawn. Uh, if you summon her during the day, she will be enraged and any attack will instantly kill her, you. Um, also, if you summon her normally at night, um, and it becomes daytime, if the fight takes too long, it becomes daytime, she will also get enraged, so keep that in mind. You do not need to summon or fight her inside of the Hallow, but if you release a Prismatic Lacewing outside of the Hallow, it will disappear quickly, meaning you must kill it very quickly before it disappears. Uh, so it's easier to summon her in the Hallow, it's easier, obviously you're only going to find the um, Prismatic Lacewings that you need to summon her in the Hallow. You can capture them, take them elsewhere, but it's going to be harder to do it that way. Uh, again, if she is summoned during the day, actually she will uh, despawn at nightfall. So if you summon her during the day and intend to fight her during the day, she will despawn at night nightfall. On the other hand, if she's summoned at night, she will never despawn, but she will still become enraged, as I mentioned, once day begins. Um, if she was damaged at all during the night, she will not drop the Terra Prisma. All of the damage must be inflicted during the day only if you want that Terra Prisma. Um, which I'm not, again, I'm not going to do because I'm just not that good. But uh, the, I will give you some advice on, on how best to achieve that if you think you're good enough. And good luck to you. Um, the Prismatic Lacewing will show up on the Lifeform Analyzer and its derivatives. So that can be a very helpful tool for locating one. Battle potions and water candles can also help to increase the spawn rates of the prismatic lace wings along with other critters and enemies. Um, and again, you can fight her anytime after you've defeated Plantera. You don't have to fight her immediately after. You can wait a little, get some better gear. Um, she will be very difficult to defeat immediately after uh, fighting Plantera. So I'm going to give you a range of stuff uh, to work with. Um, I'm going to use a little bit later stuff because again, <laughs> my, my skill level is not super high in terms of just gameplay dodging and so on. Um, so you can wait until you have better gear or you can uh, avoid fighting her entirely if you're scared. <laughs> but I'll show you an easy way that um, I'm going to do it that, that works pretty well for me. And there's lots of ways depending which class and so on. Uh, so about the fight, the fight is essentially a bullet hell dodging exercise. So mobility will be key. The Empress of Light flies around very quickly, cycling through a series of attacks, which change once you reduce her to half of her total health. So phase one is initially, and then once you get her to phase two, that's half of her total health, she changes her attack patterns. She will quickly fly above you between attacks, meaning that you should generally stay below her to avoid contact damage. Um, knowing the order of these attacks so that you can anticipate the next barrage can definitely be quite helpful in defeating her. Uh, I haven't memorized them personally, but there they are if you want to try. Uh, so I'm just going to describe each of these attacks first of all, but you can see the list there. 
Uh, prismatic bolts is basically a cloud of bolts that form above the empress which home in on the player after a short time um, they can be avoided by dodging quickly after they start to move towards you uh, the prismatic bolts version 2 is the version of the prismatic bolts in the second phase the bolts in this case are fired out in a cloud around her and if the player is close the bolts will surround them and they will then home in on the player again um, on expert or master difficulty or when she's enraged she can combine both versions Keep that in mind as well. Uh, there's a dash attack where she will position herself to the left or right of you and then dash at you. There's a sun dance where she hovers above you and emits three sets of six to eight rays which sort of rotate around her. There's what's called the everlasting rainbow where she releases a ring of 13 stars which spiral clockways out and then back in leaving a damaging trail behind them. There's the Ethereal Lance, where she summons a swarm of swords, which fire in the direction of the, that the player was moving when the swords were summoned, leaving a beam trail. They do not cause damage until they are launched and can be dodged by moving after they are summoned. So you see those bunch of beams. Um, basically, you just kind of wait for them, wait just as they actually appear and then dodge out of their way. Uh, there's also a version 2, Ethereal Lance version 2, which happens in the second phase only, where she summons four to six evenly spaced waves of swords. So uh, on normal non-enraged difficulty, those will sweep across the screen in alternating directions, left to right, right to left, top left to bottom right, and top right to bottom left. On Expert Master or when a when she's enraged, they will sweep from one direction to just past the player's position. So they won't sweep all the way across. They'll just go to just pass you um, and then go on to the next uh, direction, let's say. Um, but otherwise, they work in a similar pattern. First will be the left side to the right side, then right side to the left, top left to bottom right, top right to bottom left. And there's an additional couple sweeps, uh, one from the bottom left to the um, above right of the player and finally from uh, bottom right to above left of the player again these um, in this version they sweep just past so that's on expert master or when uh, she is enraged so basically starting from the two sides and then all four corners whereas the uh, normal non enraged version um, it's left to right or it's from each side and then from the top corners only so there's four on <laughs> normal, non enraged, and there's six on expert master or enraged. Anyway, um, again, you can see the list there. Uh, so, first phase is prismatic bolts, dash attack, sun dance, dash attack, everlasting rainbow, prismatic bolts, dash attack, ethereal lance, dash attack, everlasting rainbow. So, you'll notice there's a, almost a repetition there. The only uh, difference, it's a pattern of five attacks twice. Uh, with the third attack being different, which makes it a pattern of 10. <laughs> but it, the, um, the middle one basically is the difference between the first five and the second five. And that pattern will repeat indefinitely until she is reduced to half of her original health when she goes to the second phase. And then it's um, not as obvious of a pattern. It's a, a little harder to predict pattern. You can see uh, there's 9 or 10 depending on the difficulty. So again, Expert Master or if she's enraged, there's that 3B that I st shoved in there. So it's Ethereal Lance version 2, Prismatic Bolts, Dash Attack um, on Expert Master or enraged. Then you'll get the Ethereal Lance. Uh, and regardless, after that, you will get the Everlasting Rainbow, Prismatic Bolts, Sundance, Ethereal Lance, Dash Attack, Prismatic Bolts version 2, which is the circle version. And then it cycles back. So it just goes through those the list and then it cycles back to number one again. And it will just continue that way. So uh, moving on again. Arena and strategies. So your arena should be designed for fast movement. So an asphalt bridge is one very good option. Uh, additionally, you could use platform-based stairs or multiple levels of platforms that you can move up and down. Um, although you will lose speed on platforms compared to asphalt if you're on foot, so keep that in mind. Uh, Rod of Discord or even the Hook of Dissonance can be helpful to dodge some of her attacks if you're quick. Uh, essentially, you can just beam to the other side of her. Alternatively, you can also use teleporters or a large looping minecart track to help with dodging. It's actually possible to make a gigantic Minecraft minecart track that uh, loops way around her essentially and infinitely. So if you are using minecarts, it's best to use booster tracks um, and on expert master mode, the mechanical cart for maximum speed. 
Uh, although you will find that, you know, the manual dodging is a little harder on a minecart. You can only jump so high and so on. So um, I wouldn't do that personally, but uh, but certainly it can work. She is only immune to the confused debuff, which means you can inflict a variety of debuffs on her, including Icker, Curse Flames, uh, Venom, Poison, all those things on Fire, Frostburn, all those things you can inflict on her. As always, make sure to include campfires, heart lanterns, a garden gnome, a bath statue, honey pools, and for magic users, one or more stars in a bottle if you are making a, um, an actual arena within a certain area. Um, if you're making like a really long asphalt bridge, which is actually what I did, um, I just put campfires and heart lanterns along it because those are easy, but you may not have enough supplies to do all those things all the way along. Uh, sunflowers can also help um, if you have... Uh, a certain space that you can cover with them. Um, if you want to go a little further, you can also wire heart statues to timers and magic users can also wire star statues to timers um, to give you some extra little boosts with hearts and stars. Uh, unfortunately, NPCs such as the nurse are likely to die during this fight, so keeping them nearby is not um, going to be super useful, and the Empress will also despawn when she kills you, so there's not too much point building a house or putting NPCs in the area, because uh, you're not really going to be able to respawn when you die, and uh, so on. As for a daytime strategy, a uh, general daytime strategy, Focus everything on being able to cancel or dodge hits as much as possible and then maximize damage with whatever you have left. I'm going to go into details on that in the armor and accessories section, which armor you should use if you're going to try it during the day, which accessories you should use uh, primarily if you're going to do it during the day. So let's get on to armor. Uh, if you are fighting her during the day, the Hallowed Armor's Shadow Dodge ability makes that set the best choice since you can survive occasional hits with the Shadow Dodge and the lower defense won't matter. You basically get a timer on your Shadow Dodge. It's good for, is it 45 or 30 seconds anyway? Um, you, you can get hit once during that time without getting actually hit. <laughs> so uh, it also remains an option if you're fighting her normally at night. You can use the Hallowed, dot, uh, hallowed Armor. Um, it does have lower stats than some of the other ones. Um, just a general suggestion, if you do want to fight her during the day, personally I would do it as a summoner with maximum damage avoidance, uh, including the Hallowed Armor with its Shadow Dodge. Since the low defense is not going to matter, any hit that actually lands is going to kill you anyway. So that low summoner defense isn't going to matter at that point. And the minions will allow you to focus on dodging. Just some, some advice on the daytime fight. So getting on to armor in general though. If you're not relying on the Hallowed Shadow Dodge, uh, Chlorified Armor can also work since it has higher defense as well as an auto-firing high damage projectile to help take her out faster, but it's absolutely a bare minimum choice otherwise. It's uh, really, you you want something better than that probably. Um, so for mages, Spectre Armor is the best option at this point. Using the mask most of the time um, for the highest damage output, it's going to have way higher damage output and the hood only for healing. Uh, I am going to say though, because I suck at dodging, um, my strategy is going to just be hood all the time. <laughs> for uh, ranged players, the Shroomite armor is best uh, with whichever headgear matches your weaponry. Summoners will want to use the Tiki armor unless you first fight the Pumpkin Moon event, at which point you can craft the Spooky armor. And since 1.4, the Spooky armor is simply better. Melee players can use the turtle armor to get a little higher defense uh, and reduction in damage taken versus the chlorophyte armor, but it does come at the cost of lower weapon damage compared to uh, chlorophyte armor, actually, surprisingly. Um, if you are a melee player and you do fight her after defeating the golem, then you can use the beetle armor and that will be your best choice for sure. So, weapons. Uh, generally, you will want to use weapons that allow you to damage her at a distance while avoiding contact damage from her fast flying and avoiding damage from her many rapidly moving attacks. So a fast homing weapon is kind of the general recommendation. That's usually a good choice. Uh, so class based, um, the flare on is a great choice for melee players if you can get it from Duke Fishron. If you have defeated Golem, you can also use the possessed hatchet as another good homing uh, option. If you want to use a sword, uh, the Seedler, the Terra Blade, the Influx Waver, or the Flying Dragon, any of those can work. Um, Yo-Yo players can use the Eye of Cthulhu Yo-Yo with a Yo-Yo Bag. It's a good option in general, although the range is a bit limited. 
and vampire knives can also help as a secondary weapon to regain health uh, when you need it as a melee player. Ranged players can use the tactical shotgun from the Postplantera dungeon, along with chlorophyte bullets. It's a pretty easy go-to. Uh, if you can farm the Frost Moon, the chain gun should be a better option, as well as the Xeno Popper from the Martian Madness event will also be a better option. Um, basically, Xeno Popper is effectively going to be an upgrade to that tactical shotgun. Lots of bullets. Uh, the Tsunami Bow from Duke Fishron is another excellent choice. The Aerial Bane can also work, and for those you will want Icker or Venom arrows. Further options include the Piranha Gun for continual homing damage, and the Snowman Cannon as another strong homing weapon. The Electrosphere Launcher can also be used anytime she stays in one area, such as when she's doing her Sundance. Uh, for mages who are willing to farm the Frost Moon, the Blizzard Staff is one of the best choices that you're going to have, and the Razor Pine can also work. Uh, the Laser Machine Gun from the Martian Saucer is an alternative. It's a little weaker, but a uh, similar idea to the Razor Pine. The Razor Blade Typhoon from du Duke Fishron also works quite well as a homing weapon, although it's a little bit lower uh, damage per second. If you're trying to do it as early as possible, you can also, you can try, <laughs> and I, I'm not recommending this exactly, but if you really want to do it um, as soon after Plantera as possible, you could try to get away with the Meteor Staff. It's going to be a big challenge. Uh, it uses mana quite badly, and the, the damage is a lot lower than the ones I mentioned, but of course those are hard to get. Uh, the Resonance Scepter might also work if you can keep it on target. Uh, the Heat Ray from Golem is a good option that's not much later if you can aim well. So you just need to defeat Golem. You might need to farm him, get the Heat Ray. If you're good at aiming, that might be might be an option. <laughs> um, those first one I mentioned are definitely the best options, but again, they are kind of hard to get. Um, if you really can't aim and you also haven't gotten later better weapons, you could try the Bat Scepter or the Spectre Staff. Uh, both good homing weapons, but the damage is rather low. So at best, it's going to take a while with one of those. If you can manage to defeat Betsy, bit of a stretch, uh, but if you defeat Betsy from the Old One's army before this fight, uh, the Betsy's Wrath weapon can put a huge dent in her defense with the debuff that it inflicts. It's like a stronger version of Icker, which can also be used alongside it, so you can even use both of those. Uh, your good old Golden Shower as a magic user is going to be still a, a good option just to switch back and forth. Um, Betsy's Wrath is a magic weapon. It can also be used by any class to inflict the Betsy's Wrath debuff. So if you do have it available, um, and also, of course, there are various options for Icar depending which class you're playing. Summoners and others for that matter will ideally want the Xeno Staff. Even if you're not a summoner, you should have a minion. Um, the Xeno Staff is the best option for continual damage. It doesn't miss. Uh, the Sanguine Staff, Raven Staff, or Deadly Spheres can also work. Um, if you are a summoner, the Morningstar Whip has the highest direct damage by far, although the Durandal has higher summon tag damage for boosting your minions. Any weapon that inflicts Icker or other debuffs will also be helpful. Um, so again, most classes have an Icker weapon, except for summoners actually, but uh, you can switch between weapons to inflict one or more debuffs. You could also even get into like dart rifles and stuff with some of the other debuffs um, while still hitting her with the higher damage attacks. Uh, it doesn't hurt to inflict a bunch of debuffs. It's a little hard to manage though, so um, personally I'm not going to bother with anything other than Icker. <laughs> um, so accessories. Um, the main focus with accessories is going to be on dodging and damage avoidance, particularly if you plan to fight her during the day, in which, kit, in which case any hit that lands will kill you. Uh, beyond damage avoidance, damage output boosts will generally be the next most important um, prerogative for any remaining slots that you have left. So uh, do remember that it's important, very important to reforge your accessories. For most players, especially in expert and master mode, you'll want to reforge everything to warding to help you survive. Essentially that increases your overall defense. But if you're fighting her during the day and or you're very good at dodging, you can reforge all of your accessories to menacing to maximize your data, your damage output instead. So warding is not going to help you. If you're fighting her during the day, she's going to kill you in one hit anyway. So in that case, you're definitely going to want menacing. You maximize your damage output, get the fight over with as fast as possible. Accessories in general, the Master Ninja Gear will be one of the best and most important accessories to use as it both helps with dodging and can avoid and cancel 
it will avoid or cancel damage being taken so it will just like if you would have gotten hit sometimes you just won't <laughs> so the master ninja gear is excellent for that the uh, expert and master mode brain of confusion can also be used for an additional chance to avoid damage um, and the Shield of Cthulhu can be a weaker substitute for the Master Ninja Gear's dash ability if you don't have the Master Ninja Gear. Uh, quick mobility will be essential, so the basic strategy will include fast moving wings and a good set of boots or, or an Asheville asphalt bridge and or an asphalt bridge uh, specifically you want fast accelerating and or hovering wings um, the ideal options are the fisher on wings or betsy's wings obviously going to be uh, at the top end hardest to get at this point in the game um, but either the uh, frost spark or terra spark boots will be the fastest running speed or the amphibian boots if you want to help boost your flight takeoff are a good choice as well especially i would suggest with an asphalt bridge uh, so you can get up and out of the way quickly. Um, there are various other wing options as well. You don't have to have Fish Ron or Betsy's wings. Those are just the best ones that um, you're going to have access to. Even something like the jetpack or the hoverboard, something like that, um, can give you some advantages as well. Uh, alternatively, fast flying mounts are also viable to save some accessory slots. So as long as you have something that allows you to dodge effectively as a mount, um, you can save the slots for your wings and or boots. Um, and that will give you a couple extra slots for damage avoidance and or damage output. Uh, the gelatinous pillion, aka the wing slime mount is one of the easier and better options. Since it also increases falling speed, it allows you to dodge pretty effectively. However, it does not fly as high or as long as some of the other mounts. So uh, on 1.4.0, the Master Mode exclusive Black Spot or Pirate Ship has a very high top speed. Unfortunately, that was nerfed on 1.4.1. So it depends what platform and what version you're on, uh, whether that one's going to be useful. Um, as of this recording, mobile's on 1.4.0. So Black Spot will still be good. 1.4.1 is on PC at this point. Um, so it's no longer good. <laughs> but uh, alternatives to that are the Cosmic Car Key, the UFO mount from the Martian Madness event. And if you are playing in Expert or Master mode, the Witch's Broom um, on 1.4.1, it's actually a little faster. Or the uh, Cute Fish Ron mount if you can keep it wet. So for instance, if you want to fight the Empress in the rain with the Cute Fish Ron mount is an excellent option. It moves very quickly. Other accessories, the Celestial Shell is an excellent option if you've defeated the Golem and collected all of the parts. Um, the Moonstone or Celestial Stone are still helpful if you haven't gathered everything to get the Celestial Shell. Uh, the Charm of Myths is important for all classes and the Worm Scarf might be helpful if you have the space as well. Uh, the Frozen Shield is a good option for knockback immunity along with damage reduction. It's particularly useful for melee players, but potentially for others as well. Uh, melee players um, will want the Mechanical Glove if you're on 1.4.0 or the Fire Gauntlet if you're on 1.4.1. And yo-yo players will want the yo-yo bag. Range players should use the Recon Scope or the sniper scope, or even both together, they will stack actually. So uh, if you're using a bow or other arrow based weapons, the magic quiver or its derivatives will also help quite a lot. Magic users should consider the celestial emblem along with some star statues wired to timers, uh, which can also work with, those statues can also work with uh, celestial magnet or other derivatives such as the celestial cuffs. Um, the magic cuffs are very helpful and stack best with the celestial emblem uh, or another celestial magnet derivative if you already have one. If you don't, you can turn the magic cuffs into the celestial cuffs. It actually loses a little bit of mana, um, but you do need that celestial magnet effect to get those stars. So celestial emblem takes care of that. So celestial emblem plus magic cuffs is an excellent combination. Um, the mana cloak is also quite nice to have as a magic player or another mana flower derivative if you prefer a different one. For summoners, the most important damage and minion boosting accessories are the Pasperus Scarab, Necromantic Scroll, and the Pygmy Necklace in that order. Uh, moving on though again, um, buffs. The slice of cake 
is always helpful. It gives you a speed boost, particularly uh, some other boosts as well. And your class specific buff stations will also provide great boosts. So for melee, that's the sharpening station. For ranged, it's the ammo box. For mages, you're gonna want the crystal ball. And for summoners or anyone, in fact, use the bewitching table for an extra minion. So it's actually possible to get up to three minions, even if you're not a summoner. You have your one by default. The uh, bewitching table gives you a second one. And uh, there's a, the summoning potion um, which gives you a third. So you'll also want food to get the well-fed buff, particularly if you're on expert or master. Uh, ideally, you want the exquisitely stuffed level. There are different levels of well-fed in the game at this point. Um, so you'll want the uh, major improvement to stats version. Uh, potions and flasks can also help to give you an edge. So of course, you'll want the best health potions available and the best mana potions if you're a magic user. Iron Skin, Regeneration, Endurance, and Life Force are all potions that will help you survive the fight. Swiftness gives you extra mobility. For magic users, you will want magic, uh, sorry, mana regeneration and magic power. You'll definitely want both of those as a, as a mage. Um, Rage and Wrath for general damage boosts for whatever class you're playing. Uh, heart Reach to grab hearts. Hunter to highlight slimes. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's uh, left over from my previous... Um, you don't you don't need hunter for this fight. Uh, archery you'll want for arrow based weapons. Uh, ammo reservation you'll want for saving bullets, arrows, or darts, uh, particularly as a ranger. Summoning potions of course are essential for summoners, but useful for all classes as I mentioned. Calming potions are not necessary, but can reduce the spawning of unrelated enemies. Uh, Featherfall or Gravitation potions can potentially optionally be help, used to help with dodging. You could even use Gravitation potions to dodge quickly up and down. Uh, actually, yeah, that was one of those. <laughs> Ale or Sake can help increase melee damage, uh, but it lowers defense, so it's a trade-off. Melee or Summoner Whip users will also want a Flask, pr probably uh, Icker or Cursed Flames. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure whips for summoners are only affected with flasks in 1.4.1 that might not help you on mobile right now uh, and i'm not sure which version console is going to get when it comes out um if it's going to be 1.4.0 when they finally get that uh or if it'll go to 1.4.1 directly should get it later anyway so if you are using a lot of buffs keep in mind that you may want to cancel or hide your pets because they do actually count towards the maximum number of buffs that you can have in place at one time you can have up to 22 buffs or two full rows so you'll see the the little icons under your hotbar um, for all of the different effects uh, so your pets actually count in there and that takes away two two potential buffs that you could otherwise have so um, that's all that stuff uh, all the preparation, so I'm just going to get to the fight and silence these birds in just a second. Okay, so uh, it's, uh, it's dusk here and I'm just getting ready. Um, this is going to be interesting, but uh, here we go. Did I get the well-fed buff? Yes, I did. Good. Because I only had one piece of food. Alright, here we go. Um, so I am actually using the gelatinous pillion the amount from Clean Slime. As I mentioned, it's actually pretty effective. So I was able to, by uh, using that, swap out um, my wings and my boots. And that gives me some extra space for all these uh, accessories that you can see. And you can see my Master Ninja gear uh, dodging some of those hits for me. Ow. Uh, not that I'm perfect anyway, but... Anyway, I just wanted to show you what I have uh, in there, and we are getting already to the end of my little bridge, so... Yeah, see, I'm getting hit a lot, but uh, that's alright, because I am a mage, I've got the specter armor. And so that's just healing me back. It's actually reducing my damage quite a lot, um, but it's just a way of making up for the fact that I can't dodge worth nothing. So... <laughs> Um, if you can dodge, you should use the uh, mask if you're a mage. Or just play a different class. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is an option, and it's a similar thing for melee to use the vampire knives, but of course those are not homing. 
I think that I could have done this probably legitimately as a ranged player. I would, that was always uh, kind of my best class. Um, I'm just kind of challenging myself more with melee at this point, although uh, maybe this isn't the kind of challenge I'm talking about. The real challenge at this point for me is going to be um, making sure that I actually kill her before dawn. But I am using the very powerful weapons that I mentioned. Um, it was kind of a hard sell, a hard scene to, uh, to try to do it with the uh, lesser options. I did try that. So if it's me, I have to, uh, I have to get at least Duke Fishron, um, I guess, or the Frost Moon. I think Duke Fishron would probably be faster to be able to, uh, to do this, but... Okay, that is the halfway mark. But you can see this, uh, the Spectre Hood is keeping my health up even though I keep getting hit. <laughs> so that's basically my strategy. And the other strategy with this mount is to uh, effectively just keep sort of bouncing because it moves more quickly when it's in the air. It's okay on, on land, but uh, it's not great. So uh, one of those other mounts that uh, you know, can fly more effectively permanently uh, is also a good option. I'm just going to try this uh, heat ray. Yeah, see, if you can aim, the heat ray is all right. <laughs> My aim's not great. Okay, I'm getting to the other end there again. Yeah, so some of these... The wiki does mention a lot of this stuff. Um, I did come up with a few things on my own, though. Like the heat ray. Yeah, you know what? It's pretty good. The other thing is to watch the mana. I did not actually... Um, I don't think I used a... I do seem to be using uh, mana potions. I didn't think that I had included an accessory that would automatically use mana potions for me. So, you know, that would mean keeping an eye on the mana gate. And you do have to kind of alter your strategy for the different attacks. Obviously, I have not memorized them. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying my best here. Which means I'm getting hit sometimes. But yeah, I think actually I'm going to have this done in plenty of time. And you can see I've got a variety of, uh, of weapons that actually work pretty well there. So um, you can go with any of those actually. The Blizzard Staff, the Razor Blade, uh, Typhoon, the Heat Ray. Um, any of those, I'd say, are good options. I had tried a few other things that were less effective. I did um, do kind of a little testing before this to see what would work for me. And, uh, yeah, it was the hood for me. <laughs> I, I just couldn't do it with the mask. I was getting killed. Uh, but there you go. That's all of that stuff. So let's talk about drops. Um, there we are, drops. So the Empress of Light will always drop 5 to 15 greater healing potions and one of four weapons, uh, which is one for each class. So each time you kill her, you will get a weapon for one of the classes only. Uh, so those weapons are the Eventide, which is a ranged bow, the Kaleidoscope, which is the most powerful summoner whip overall, uh, the Night Glow, which is a magic weapon, and the Melee Starlight, which is uh, sort of like, it's almost, it sort of is somebody said it was sort of like a short sword. It actually sort of is like a short sword, but a really rapidly um, firing short sword that has a little more range. So it's actually a very powerful weapon. Uh, she also has a one in four chance to drop the prismatic die, uh, one in 10 chance to drop her trophy, the uh, Empress of Light trophy, a one in seven chance to drop her mask, a one in 15 chance to drop her wings, and a one in 50 chance to drop the stellar tune, which is another magic weapon. On 1.4.1, there's also a 1 in 20 chance that she'll drop the Rainbow Cursor. Uh, if all of the damage, as I've mentioned a couple times, was inflicted during the day, if you inflict all of the damage on her during the day only, then she will always drop the Terra Prisma, which uh, is an extremely powerful summoner minion weapon, uh, arguably the most powerful in the, day, in the game. Um, it's right up there with the uh, dragon. So... Um, 
yeah, you can see from my boss fight that wasn't going to happen for me. There's no way that I'm going to survive uh, without taking any hits. Uh, but on expert and master mode, she will always drop a treasure bag, which will always contain the soaring insignia, which is an accessory that grants infinite flight to any set of wings. So whatever set of wings you're using, if you equip the soaring insignia as well, you have infinite flight. Um, the chances of getting the Empress Wings increase to 1 in 10 on Expert and Master, and the chance for the Stellar Tune increases to 1 in 20 if you're on Expert or Master Mode. Uh, in Master Mode only, she'll always drop her Relic, and there's also a 1 in 4 chance that she'll drop the Jewel of Light, uh, which summons a miniature Fairy Princess Light Pet, which looks sort of similar to her. So, uh, let's check out what I got this time. Um, so I got the relic. I've already got a relic up, up here from when I was uh, fighting her experimenting before, but here's my treasure bag. Oh, and I got the trophy. What's in the treasure bag? I've got my soaring insignia, of course. I've got the kaleidoscope, which is the uh, whip for summoners. Um, I do also have my treasure bag from when I defeated her uh, when I was testing. So let's open that one as well. Why not? And I got another Sword and Insignia, of course. Oh, and I got my Night Glow, which is great as a magic user. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is get rid of my bats. And we'll find a victim for the Night Glow. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I should... Well, no, I guess there's... You've seen whips before. I've even done a whole uh, video on that. So here's the Night Glow in action. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice. <laughs> As you can see, those are homing things there. Um, so that would be very effective against her if you want to farm her. And a lot of her weapons actually uh, would be pretty effective against her. So anyway, um, that's it. That's the Empress of Light, my guide video. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.